In the Philippines, the fourth leading cause of death of Filipinos is vehicular accidents caused by reckless and drunk driving, bad road conditions, and defective vehicles. With a population of 94 million, wherein 13 million of those are licensed drivers driving 7.5 million registered vehicles as of 2012, 36,000 people are at risk of dying in a road crash or accident. It has also been projected that by the year 2020, 300,000 people will perish due to road mishaps. In the first quarter of 2013, 16% of the reported accidents were caused by trucks compared to the 12% of reported truck accidents in 2012. How is the government addressing the issue of ensuring road safety for motorists, pedestrians, and commuters? What are the existing laws that mandate motorists to be responsible traffic law-abiding citizens, and are these enough? What are the penalties faulty drivers and operators can face for endangering their passengers and other motorists? Good evening, you're watching the Legal Help Desk on the Solar News Channel. This show is about making the law work for you by giving you legal advice on topics that matter to you. I am Attorney Rod Nepomuceno, and tonight we'll discuss your legal rights as motorists and pedestrians, what you need to know as drivers, commuters, and pedestrians, and what you need to do should you be involved in any accident or such incident. Our first guest for tonight is Chairman Winston Hines of the LTFRB. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Good evening uh, Rod. Yeah, good evening, uh, and thank you for joining us. Attorney Karen sends her regards. Fortunately, she can't join us tonight. So um, our topic for tonight is in the context of uh, road safety. And uh, you being the chairman of the LTFRB, that you play a major role. Um, can you, but before we start off, can you describe to us, just for the benefit of our, benefit of our televiewers now, what, what really is the role of the LTFRB? Okay, as uh, the name of uh, the... Our agency suggests mm. that we are the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board. Mm. So all public land vehicles, we issue the franchises, meaning to say these franchises are the authority for them to engage mm. in public land transportation. And then thereafter, once these franchises are issued, then we regulate them. No? We mm. see to it that they will comply with the terms and conditions of the franchise. All right. So um, I, I'm glad you brought that up. No? Kasi in, in, as we know, in, in, in recent, uh, the recent days, uh, recent months, we've had uh, a couple of uh, major accidents that were, I guess, headline material. Um, and we lost a, a number of uh, very, um, I guess, important people. Uh, and that's why it became headline news. And, uh, there was a lot of talk regarding the suspension of uh, the franchises uh, of, of these bus companies. No? Now, in, in that regard, um, what is the role that uh, LTFRB plays no? in ensuring uh, that these, these accidents, uh, I mean, we avoid these type of accidents? Okay. Uh, in the terms and conditions of the franchise, number one condition is it is the obligation of the franchise owners to maintain their authorized vehicles safe, dependable, mm -hmm. uh, um, comfortable, convenient, and environment friendly. Mm -hmm. What we are after is really safe uh, vehicles. Mm -hmm. So whenever there is a violation mm -hmm. of this uh, condition or this mm -hmm. obligation, then that will now fall under the violation of the public service law. Mm -hmm. Because under the public service law, it is prohibited that uh, they will uh, cause a willful disobedience and a contumacious refusal to comply with the valid orders of uh, the board. Mm -hmm. So therefore, that will now give us the opportunity or the privilege to exercise mm -hmm. our right under the public service law, which is the right either to suspend, to remove, mm -hmm. to revoke, or to cancel franchises. And that's, a, that's kind of a painful punishment. No? I, I was reading uh, something, uh, an article that came out uh, regarding the, the bus company that was uh, one of their buses fell from the, 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 the SLEX. No? <clears throat> and the suspension was uh, their, their entire fleet, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, can you, yeah, so it, it, it's, uh, I guess what my point is, it, it is uh, kind of a, uh, a painful penalty or the power that you wield uh, with these franchises, these bus, bus franchises, is, is quite uh, powerful. Yes, uh, in fact, uh, even during the time of the accident, even before any investigation had already commenced, mm. we have the power to issue what we call a preventive suspension mm -hmm. order or a PSO right. under the public service law as a way, 
as uh, by way of a precautionary measure in order to ensure that all the vehicles mm -hmm. of the uh, operator are safe, dependable, then we can issue a preventive suspension order good for 30 days. Okay. And within this period, our standard operating procedure now is that if a public utility vehicle is involved in a serious accident, either causing death or uh, serious physical injuries, then we issue mm -hmm. PSO and we require the operator to undergo uh, the comprehensive uh, motor vehicle inspection mm. to see to it that its vehicles are roadworthy. We require likewise the uh, seminar of its drivers, road safety seminar, and the drug testing of uh, the driver. So no. these are the conditions before the PSO can be lifted by the board. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the pertinent laws? Now, for, for me, let's say I wanted to uh, put up a bus company, uh, I want to get a franchise, uh, what laws uh, pertain to, uh, let's say, securing franchise and uh, regarding the registration of my, my buses? What, what should I follow? Where, where should I go? Okay, there are two basic laws that uh, we, the LTFRB, is uh, observing. Number one is uh, the Executive Order 202 that created the LTFRB. Mm -hmm. that, or the, that executive order defines our powers and functions. Mm -hmm. Then the Public Service Law, which the... Which, uh, uh, defines what is public service mm -hmm. and provides for the procedure for mm -hmm. the, the processes. Uh, for the processes. Mm -hmm. But uh, essentially, since the public service law was enacted mm -hmm. way back in uh, during the Commonwealth regime, so you can imagine yeah. oh, wow. Rod, that it was in <laughs> 1936 that this law was enacted, uh -huh. uh, the LTFRB has come out with mm -hmm. various circulars yeah. uh, in order to... Uh, to uh, facilitate the application, so, processing, evaluation of all these applications. All right, so uh, you mentioned earlier when it comes to, I guess, regulating buses. So what LTFRB covers are, I guess, the public buses, jeepneys, are, are the jeepneys right. under you? That's uh, right. Taxis? Yes. Uh, um, are the tricycles un under the LTFRB? No, uh, tricycles are now under the jurisdiction of the local government unit since uh, mm. 1991 when this was devolved by the local government code to the local government And units. so I would assume even pedicabs would be under the yes. lo local area. So, when it com so anytime, anytime there are, let's say, franchises, franchise holders who want to renew, do you, uh, do you, do you get to check the worthiness of, of each of each unit that uh, they're trying to, I guess, renew the, the, the registration, and, the, and and if ever, if if you ever you do get to check them, how thorough is is this checking? Okay. Just for, in fact, for it's not only during renewal because mm. uh, renewal of a franchise happens every five years. Mm. Uh, franchises or CPCs or Certificate of Public Convenience has a life of five years. So, mm -hmm. uh, what actually happens is that uh, every year that this. Uh, uh, vehicles, just mm -hmm. like any other private vehicle that renews their registration with the LTO, then that's the time that the certi that the roadworthiness are being mm -hmm. checked. Mm -hmm. uh, roadworthiness is being checked mm -hmm. by the Land Transportation Office because that's mm -hmm. the arm of our... Uh, so it's the LTO. It's yes, the LTO, the LTO that, checks the, okay. that checks the roadworthiness. All right. But in the process, in the exercise of our regulatory function, you would uh, see that in the past uh, months, even before the accidents happen, we now conduct uh, regular and consistent garage inspection where we ground all the fleet mm -hmm. of a certain bus company even without an accident and we do inspection. All right. So you, you ground them all? So mm -hmm. you, you essentially stop their operations for, for that day? And yes, that is uh, right. Uh, uh, we, we do that for mm -hmm. city buses and provincial buses. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the last uh, two weeks, we've been doing, mm -hmm. even on Saturdays, mm -hmm. inspections of provincial bus uh, operators. Yeah, I, guess, I guess that's the reason why we, we we're bringing this up, and that's why we're, we're discussing this now, is that uh, a lot of people are asking, how thorough is it? Do you, do you just look at it and see more or less from the outside or do you have mechanics and, and engine experts to, to really evaluate the worthiness of, of each and every unit that's, that falls within a franchise or that is under a franchise? Okay. Uh, let, let me state that uh, the maintenance of the vehicles in so far as the safety concerns are actually, is actually the first and foremost obligation and duty mm. of an operator. Yes. For us to see to it that they are complying then uh, we do check, mm. but uh, the limitations of our personnel, which mm. we really don't have uh, the engineers 
and the mechanics, mechanics that yeah. see to it that they are complying with each and every mm -hmm. uh, standard requirements, mm -hmm. then we just see to it that they have the financial capability to maintain uh, these uh, vehicles, that they have the adequate uh, equipment, equipment yeah. as well as the uh, license uh, mechanics in their uh, in, under in their employment, so that's the way we see to it mm. that uh, they are complying so you make with a, the number one obligation. It's like a due diligence, uh, kind of an audit, if you will, right? Uh, auditing, where you're checking their, uh, I guess, where they're they're uh, parked. I mean, that, that, that area, their, their garage or, yes. or uh, uh, the bus mm. terminal, so to speak. Mm. All right. Now, uh, from from your knowledge, uh, Chairman, I, I know that uh, there's a lot of clamor and there was, there was a lot of noise. Uh, that that uh, that was produced uh, after these accidents, and I guess, do you know of any pending bills uh, that would in, ensure the safety of of passengers in in these um, uh, land uh, transportation vehicles okay. like uh, buses yeah. and but but before answering that, uh, I would say that we have now a pending uh, proposal. Actually, mm. not only a proposal; it's an actual project right now, and mm. we are now at the stage of finalizing our memorandum circular mm -hmm. that will now impose the mandatory installation of appropriate and cost-effective systems within which to address the speeding of uh, public utility vehicles and not only buses. Yeah, I was going to I was going to ask that. Uh, where is the LTFRB when it comes to the, sp the speed limits of, of buses and, and public transportation in general? Okay. Uh, under our law, no, mm -hmm. under the two, Executive Order 202 and I said the Public Service Law, we have the power to mandate the install installation of devices and equipment that will ensure that these public utility vehicles deliver their charges or their, the persons under them, under their care, mm -hmm. to uh, their destination safely mm -hmm. and conveniently. And that's where we are coming in. Mm -hmm. Even with administrative measures mm -hmm. only, via the, the, the passage of a memorandum circular, mm -hmm. under the law, we are empowered to mandate this. So we are now at that stage. Uh, I, I've discussed this mm. uh, road with the public utility bus operators, mm. and they are supportive of uh, these, uh, these measures. And, measures. and in fact, some of them have already uh, established and adapted, even way, way back. Voluntar voluntarily. Voluntarily, yeah, because own, they uh, found the process. advantages of these uh, measures, like GPS, speed limiter, CCTV, and TACOM. So they're all complying, they're all complying with that. I mean, this, some, this, but, yeah. the big fleet operators. All right. Now, uh, I need to ask you this, uh, Chairman. Are, is there any update at all? I, I know our televiewers are probably um, uh, curious. Now. Is there any update at all in regard to uh, the, the cases involving uh, Don Mariano and, and Florid, the Florida bus companies? Is, uh, is, what are, what's the status now? Of well, so far as Don Mariano, it is already out of our hands. We mm -hmm. decided uh, in, uh, on January 14, 2014, by revoking the entire fleet of Don Mariano, they filed a motion for reconsideration. Mm. And uh, last week, we, February 19, we issued the, mo the order denying the motion for reconsideration. Mm, you denied so, it? Oh, so it's out of denied. your hands? So now they are grounded, their franchise is revoked and cancelled. Mm -hmm. So they have other legal remedy and it will now be up to the company to avail of the What is their legal, legal remedy, remedy Which is an appeal to the office of the secretary. Ah, okay, so that's that's the next step. So as of now, they're all they're grounded. Yes. Uh, so far as the case of GB Florida, we yeah. we held our first hearing mm -hmm. last uh, February 19, and uh, there will be an on-site hearing on February 28 in Buntok, mm -hmm. Mountain Province. Then uh, thereafter, we will still see if there's still a need to uh, conduct further hearing and uh, the 30-day preventive suspension of GB Florida of all its franchises. Mm -hmm. of all its buses will end on March 9. We are mm -hmm. endeavoring to, to, to uh, decide mm. on or before March 9. Uh, all right. So, okay. Now, uh, and we'll, we'll get to that. There was an issue regarding, um, I guess, colorum no? when, it, when it came to uh, Florida. That, 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 that term always comes up. A lot of people have a basic idea of it, but uh, are not quite familiar with it. Can you explain what a colorum is and... and what is the legal re repercussion when, when you are caught, I guess, or maybe one of your buses, uh, I guess, gets involved in an accident and it is under colorum? Okay. Let's first discuss or de define what is a public service or a mm. common carrier. Mm. A public service is uh, when you offer your vehicle for hire or for compensation, either permanently or temporarily. 
mm-hmm. or regularly or intermittently. Mm-hmm. As long as the element of for hire is already there, mm-hmm. then it becomes a public service mm-hmm. which the law requires. Must You must secure now the certificate of public convenience from LTFRB. So mm-hmm. therefore, if you are, say, you have a private vehicle, you have a van, mm-hmm. uh, you have a, or you have a, a van, Orban, uh, Nissan Orban, for mm-hmm. example, then you offer for services. Mm-hmm. You get kumukuha ka ng pambayad dun sa mga taong isinasakay mo yes. at ikaw ay namamasada mm-hmm. at hindi ka kumukuha ng prangkisa sa LTFRB, then you are a colorum. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have also another definition of colorum. If you are duly authorized to to uh, conduct yourself as a public service, mm-hmm. you have the CPC, but your boundary, for example, let's say a bus, mm-hmm. your boundary is only, let's say, from Olongapo City to Guagua, Pampanga. Mm-hmm. But Despite that, you extend. You mm-hmm. go inside Metro Manila, and that's what we call out of line. Mm-hmm. If you are caught in Metro Manila, whereas your boundary or your authorized route is only up to Cuagua, Pampanga, that's out of line, and we consider that likewise as color road. And, so, and uh, what, what are the penalties for that? If well, the penalties that? right now is uh, 6,000 uh, pesos under our current circular. For every offense? For every offense, whether it's a taxi, jeep, or uh, mm. bus or UV. Mm. Do you think that's uh, do you think that's light or do you think that's uh, that's uh, that's sufficient in terms of uh, enforcing that 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 rule? Uh, it is uh, very light and it encourages uh, yeah. these private vehicles and buses to commit colorum because the mm. the, the income that they get yeah. from plying well, in such uh, much business more. is much more. So is, there, is there a move to increase the, that penalty? Uh, yes, uh, the secretary had uh, directed the LTO and the LTFRB to come up with a revised schedule of fines and penalties for Colorum. Mm-hmm. And we have already actually submitted this revised schedule of fines and penalties mm-hmm. with the office of the secretary. For okay. example, in the case of bus companies, we are increasing it from 6,000 to 1 million. <laughs> wow. For the first uh, that's, offense. That's a lot of percentage. Yeah. Right. And then but, for... But, uh, uh, UV Express uh, a million, can, huh? a million for every. So you get caught once, it's a million. Once it's a it's right. a million. Then uh, for painful. UV uh, Express, it's uh, two hundred thousand. All right. For taxi, it's hundred twenty thousand, and for jeepney, it's fifty thousand. The uh, computation is actually equal to 20 percent of the cost of a brand new unit. All right. Okay. Now let's let's shift gears a bit, uh, Chairman. Um, what what should the companies who uh, create uh, traffic apps? No, like uh, like Waze, for example. Um, you're familiar with them. Uh, one, are you do you support this? Does the LTFRB support the, these traffic apps? And and if you if you don't, uh, wh- why don't you um, subscribe or support these these apps? We support the traffic apps that mm. uh, will enable the commuters mm. to determine mm. uh, the situation of the traffic. Mm-hmm. Like for example, the MMDA app, mm-hmm. uh, where Edsa and other major thoroughfares will give you an idea where's the medium light mm-hmm. or uh, heavy uh, volume of traffic. Mm-hmm. Waze is also okay with us. Waze but okay. there are some apps now that uh, are promoting uh, uh, co- pro- promoting transportation or a public service without the required Fran- franchise. franchise or CPC. Ah, okay. That's why uh, we are calling them to a hearing uh, not necessarily, we are not making judgments right now, yeah. mm. but we are calling them to a hearing. I am issuing a Shoko's order uh, for them to attend our hearing and explain to us their concept. Mm-hmm. Actually, they are not the ones operating, they, they were not the ones violating, but the public, but the vehicles that are Covered using, un- ah, okay. that are participating in, in, their, that, in that app. In that app that I will see. be operating, but since they are the ones uh, being used. Mm-hmm. They are the ones being used, or what we call uh, principal by direct participation, yeah. Yeah. or by uh, or maybe they're the medium, by, right? Yeah, yeah, because they are the medium. Yeah. Without them, it yeah. would not have happened. Mm-hmm. This, I don't want to mention the names of this app, but they uh, know who they are really, actually. Okay, so we can't mention it yet because I was going to say, I was actually going to say, if uh, just just to be careful, you, you know, you were going to ask you the names of the apps, but for the meantime, let's just be careful, uh, ladies yes. and gentlemen. Let's be careful about. These apps that are, are, I guess, presenting themselves as service in terms of giving you information regarding traffic, right? So the, the problem uh, with them, uh, uh, Rod, is that uh, they promote the use of a private vehicle 
mm. in order for this private vehicle to earn to, something to earn some, uh, by sharing his yeah. vehicle yeah. to another by means of compensation. So that's where, that's, the, that's problem, where the problem lies. Because oh, right. basically under our mm. concept, that's a public yeah. service. So if, you're, if it's basically an app, that's that's giving information purely on on the traffic conditions that's fine but if it tells you uh, to get how you can probably save money and or get uh, get a vehicle to transport you from one place to another for for a fee that's where the problem lies yes uh, okay. now, right. now I, I, I can name for example the uh, grab taxi and uh, uh, the easy taxi these uh, are uh, these are apps that uh, will help the commuters get a taxi yeah okay and they are very transparent because this was already presented to us mm -hmm. uh, by uh, helping you get a taxi an authorized taxi an authorized because friend. they uh -huh. only deal with license with operators that are duly authorized by us I but see. on top of the taxi fare of the meter that you will get from the reading mm -hmm. then they add on a 70 pesos uh -huh. that's, fine. that's fine but that's fine because if you want to use it, it's it's the it's the decision of the commuter. Mm. If he doesn't want, then you just hail the ah, taxi okay. by your or by so, the old style. Yeah, the, so it's yeah. transparent. So it's, it's so, transparent, and it's yeah. a, it's a public vehicle with a franchise. Yes, a public right. vehicle with a franchise. All right. Now, uh, Chairman, if I hope you don't mind, we have some questions from our televiewers. Uh, Pearl is asking: With the numerous vehicle accidents reported in the news uh, involving public transportation. Who is more liable, the driver of the vehicle or the owner of the company? What are the liabilities of each of the parties involved and who should uh, people file a case against? I guess you have to put on your lawyer hat now, no? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Actually, both of them. Yeah. Uh, well, and so far as LTFRB is concerned, mm -hmm. we are actually initiating the case mm -hmm. uh, by our own selves. We don't need, as I always say, we don't mm -hmm. need a complainant in mm. order for us to exercise our regulatory function. Mm -hmm. Well, and so far as the liability is concerned, as you said, the criminal liability will mm -hmm. uh, be uh, will fall mm -hmm. with the driver because right. of his recklessness. Then he will be liable if found guilty, if found guilty yeah. by reckless imprudence, resulting to death mm -hmm. or resulting to resulting homicide or physical injuries. Mm -hmm. But in so far as the civil liability is concerned, mm -hmm. it is really the uh, liability will really fall on the operator. On the operator, yes. right? That's the civil liability. The civil liability, right? And of course, as a, as a carrier, uh, that's um, the what is the the required uh, diligence the, uh, that uh, the that the oper that the public should expect from operators. It's an extraordinary diligence mm -hmm. uh, uh, by law under the civil service uh, under mm -hmm. the civil uh, code. Mm -hmm. The common carriers are required to observe extraordinary diligence. Ibig mm -hmm. po nun, hindi lang isang pag-iingat. Dapat sobrang mm -hmm. sobrang, sobrang pag-iingat pag para so, talagang mga pangalagaan nila ang kapakanan ng kanilang mga mm -hmm. pasahero. So in other words, even if they showed that they exercise due care, if it was not extraordinary care, they can still be held liable. Yes, that All is right. right. All right. Now, a question naman from a Facebook user, uh, Angel. How can LTFRB address the problem with PUVs, uh, POV drivers who smoke inside vehicles despite the law banning this? Ayan, oh, na experience kanang ibang tao yan. So, anong, yes. uh, uh, what do we do with that? We have already a uh, memorandum circular that prohibits uh, smoking. Mm -hmm. Even there's a law that prohibits uh, smoking in, in public, public places vehicle. and in public uh, mm -hmm. transportation. Mm -hmm. We encourage them to, uh, to call report. our hotline, which mm -hmm. is uh, what is a the 24, hotline? A 24 by 7 hotline. Mm -hmm. No, it's uh, 459 2129, mm -hmm. and they can also log on to our Facebook page, which mm -hmm. is LTFRB Citizen Enforcer, and they can. Uh, now uh, become our citizen enforcer, so what we call them the sitzers mm -hmm. of the LTFRB mm -hmm. and uh, comment or uh, post their complaint pictures, video, mm -hmm. or even their comment and we will act on them as swift. And Chairman, do they, can they expect uh, a swift response from the LTFRB? When, should they post in Facebook or your Twitter or let's say call the hotline? Uh, yes, kind of uh, uh, that's guaranteed because we have a special team that's now uh, focusing on a 24-hour basis also on all these uh, uh, complaints because we are now very uh, active in our social media mm -hmm. interaction with the people because we want the people to be empowered that's mm -hmm. why we created the LTFRB citizen mm -hmm. enforcer because mm -hmm. we want the power to we, we want the people to be empowered and become part yeah. of our enforcement the, 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 you're empowering the citizens to empowering the citizens to, to, to monitor this now what kind of penalties now let's say in that in that case the question is um, smoking uh, dr the driver is smoking what kind of penalties uh, uh, does the driver face? For the first offense, it is mm. 2,000. 
2000. Ah, 2000. And the second offense, it becomes 5000 and three months suspension of mm -hmm. the certificate of public uh, convenience. Mm -hmm. So uh, so they report uh, they report through through Facebook or through your hotline. Uh, they they mentioned the, I guess the plate number of, yes. of the public vehicle. Of course, they don't know the name of the driver, mm -hmm. right? So that then I mean, it, instantly, how do you enforce the how do you enforce the fine? Now? We we call actually the operator. operator. It's the oh. operator that will now be liable to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the driver, we refer that to the LTO because it is the Land Transportation Office who mm -hmm. will take care of the revocation of the driver's license or penalty for the driver. All right. All right. So um, I think we need to take a short break. Uh, when we return, we will continue discussing your rights on, the, on road safety. Stay tuned. When it comes to driving and commuting, there's always a risk. There's no way to predict if the vehicle we are in will be involved in an accident or not. Though there are several laws and traffic codes that help motorists from becoming victims of such accidents, there's still no assurance that these will be followed to the letter by others. Take the case of Nat Centeno. Two years ago, I just started driving. I came from school and I was with my friend Mikey. We were both in the car and we managed to make a U-turn in Katipunan and it was traffic and then the right lane was clear so I inched my way forward. However, um, out of nowhere this jeep comes and hits my car, kind of drags it along and the next there was a jeep beside me and there was a huge dent in my car. The driver was accusing me of bumping him and I told him, I didn't do that, can may I see your license? And he didn't want to give me his license. We ended up having to call the MMDA, the police, and they were assessing the situation. And all the time, uh, I, can see the, I can see the jeepney driver just sticking to the policeman, and he was telling him, she hit me, this is what happened. It's not my fault because I didn't hear him honk his horn, he didn't, flash his lights. I didn't even see him coming. The lane was clear. And then all of a sudden, he just came out of nowhere. So we ended up having to go to Camp Karingal after a while so I could file a police report. At that time, I called my parents already. When we were there, they made us fill out the police report and I paid. And the jeepney driver who couldn't pay for his police report actually accosted me and told me that I had to pay for his police report because I was the one who hit him. And I told him, hindi ko kasalanan yan, hindi ako sinungaling, and then I left him there. Uh, I didn't want to file a case. I, I didn't want to follow it up anymore. I mean, for me, it was finished. I tell them to follow the rules of the road and actually try to drive safely. And if you want to cut someone, you know, because you're in a hurry, at least give them ample warning through your lights or your horn. They were there for a reason. You're still tuned in to Legal Help Desk on Solar News Channel with our guests, Chairman Winston Hines of the LTFRB. And now joining us is Chief Pascual de los Santos of the LTO. Good evening, uh, Chief. Good evening, sir. Yeah, oh, okay, we, we asked you to, to join us because I guess our discussion uh, regarding road safety. Now, when it comes to, let's say, traffic management or mga, gana, mga traffic altercations, I, we, we know that we have to also involve the PNP and I guess the MMDA. No? So we'll, we'll limit our discussion at least uh, within the purview of the LTFRB and the LTO. Now, in this, in this case, in this scenario, uh, nakita natin yung, yung case natin no? um, involving si Nat and then she got hit by, by a jeepney driver. But the jeepney driver didn't have a license. I think yun nung naging nang issue. Walang, wal, uh, he wasn't showing his license. Now, in a situation like that, uh, the, the usual uh, well thinking ng tao is that kung wala kang lisensya, automatically ikaw may, may, uh, may kasalanan. Is that the case? Uh, kunyari, kung wala kang lisensya, since you didn't have any right to be on the road, yun nung sinasabi ng tao, wala kang right to be on the road, kahit na hindi, kahit na hindi mo kasalanan, Tama. ikaw pa rin may kasalanan. Tama, Tama po yun. Tama, Tama po yun, yun. Okay. Uh, so, so is that uh, so? 
basic that's the reason so tama yung ginagawa ni Nat na hingin yung license opo okay. uh, kumisan po nagpapalit pag wala pa yung kan pag wala pa yung police oh mga police na nagpapalit na investiga. so the moment uh, let's say in this case the moment na you know na walang lisensya yung kabila um and then I'll, I'll throw another question sa LTFRB naman um uh, the one is that wala siyang lisensya uh, anong anong uh, proper na gawin ng isang victim no in, in this case no na let's say I, I, ako yung nagkabanggaan kami and yung nakabangga ko walang lisensya ano yung, ano yung first na gagawin ko you will seek the help of the police ha? sila ho kasi magpapail ng kwandun eh, ng complete mm. ng ng kaso sa no, oh. pagkakataong yun oh so and the fact na wala siyang lisensya mm. automatic ba may automatic ba yung liability niya no? sa criminal po sa, sa criminal sa, the fact na wala siyang lisensya oh, okay so so that, that's the case now kung if you discover is it proper for me if i get hit by uh, chairman if i get hit by a, a a jeep for example or a bus uh, is it appropriate for me to ask if they have the appropriate franchise well tama po yun no mm. kasi that is the first thing that uh, mm. we should also ask mm. if they are uh, duly authorized to uh, operate as a public service vehicle so for mm. example if they are operating without authority, then uh, that also uh, that is also a factor of finding mm. them guilty mm. of recklessness. Uh -oh. So, so I can uh, legitimately ask that from from the bus driver who bumped me. Who, yes, uh, yeah, and they always some. carry. There, there is their, an their obligation and duty on the part of the public uh, utility bus operators or public utility vehicle operators to carry within their unit the mm. franchise documents. And again, I can bring that up in the police report, I can bring that up na pala, wala siyang franchise, wala siyang right to be on the road. That and is that, right. That, that, Baka po lang hindi nadala, then that's, that becomes an administrative liability sa amin. Baka naman mm. talagang meron, meron hindi oh. lang niya dala, then there is already a corresponding penalty for that. Okay, now let's dis discuss and distinguish the uh, specific roles no, of the LTFRB and the LTO. Uh, can you please more be more specific, uh, uh, Chief? No, because I mentioned the Chairman kanina yung, mga, yung role ng LTFRB, which basically involves mga public uh, transportation vehicles uh, on land. No, very specific, siya. So hindi kasama yung mga vessels uh, sa sea. Mm -hmm. so, and so far as the LTO is concerned, naman ano po yung specific mandate ng uh, LTO? Tatlo po ang mandate namin: mm -hmm. licensing of quality drivers, mm -hmm. registration of smoke-free uh, mm -hmm. vehicles, sa okay. enforcement po. Enforcement. Opa. So when you say enforcement, uh, th this involves just the, the, the driver, the, the driver, or also the vehicle. Because may registration of vehicles. Also right? the vehicle, sir. Mm. So in this case, for example, uh, yung mga natin cases of, of, of buses now falling into ravines and and uh, from the skyway, because um, may in involved dyan ng maintenance eh, or parang checking of the vehicle. And you mentioned the registration of vehicles, di ba? Responsibility ba ng LTO you know, to, to check uh, these vehicles when they're being registered? Sa nangyayari po ngayon, uh, kinukuha na, na kami ng aming higher-ups na magpuha ng parallel investigation din sa mga sa mga na, register sa sakyan. Uh -oh. So, in your case, though, you cannot just, kunyari, mukha siyang public bus, you cannot just register it, di ba? Unless they show the franchise. So how, do, how does that work? You, you, you issue the franchise and the bus company then registers it with the LTO. How, how, how does that work, uh, Chairman? Well, every year they are required what we call to undergo the confirmation process. Mm -hmm. The confirmation process is for us to see to it that they have a, a, a valid franchise and that they have what we call the passenger accident liability insurance and that mm -hmm. they are not yet phased out. Uh, yeah. Once we are satisfied with that, we pass, we give by electronic means uh, to the LTO. permission to LTO to annually register the vehicle. Mm. Now, is that an administrative <coughs> thing lang? Or do they have the, the right, may, may quasi-judicial, ano ba sila, na, I guess, uh, discretion to, to deny? Uh, wh wh what are the reasons that you can deny a registration? To, to a the, vehicle uh, and to uh, a driver? Pag ang, po, ang sasakyan ay unsafe, mm -hmm. hindi roadboard, eh, okay. dinidinay, dinidinay po ako ano, okay. ang registration. Now, how do you, how do you determine, uh, Chief, uh, if a uh, vehicle is roadworthy or, or not? Uh, do you just look at it? Uh, anong model siya? Anong Meron po kaming in, uh, inspection station. Lima po ang aming okay. inspection station na, mm -hmm. na sa iba't ibang pa. May region po, mm -hmm. uh, sa North MBIS, mm -hmm. South MBIS. Mm -hmm. Uh, isa sa region 3, parang yeah. ganun. 
So and and how how do how extensive po yung yung checking of those vehicles yung, yung inspection? I mean I mean it's easy for you to look at it and and say oh mukhang hindi roadworthy to kasi mukhang uh, marami ng dents at saka marami ng years uh, no luma na. But uh, ganun ba is it based on how it looks or do you really go into the nitty gritty and check the po engine yung, and Nangyayari po isa oras ng aming panguhuli. Uh -huh. Pag na medyo nakakuha namin, nahuli namin na hindi na hindi na yung maganda, mm. hindi nakakatanggap-tanggap yung uh -huh. kanyang paan. Uh, okay. At i-examine po namin sa inspection station. Uh -huh. Pina-undergo po namin ng... Uh, sige. Uh -huh. uh, Alright, now, now we have a question. Gentlemen, we have a question. We have a caller actually. Her name is Victoria. Uh, good evening, Victoria. Uh, good here? evening, sir. How are you? Good evening. Uh, what is your question? My question is, what uh, effort can they do? There's the, I live near Adriatico Street in Malate, okay. and right behind uh, Rizal Memorial, there's an island which is uh, being used as a maintenance yard of the orange color jeepney. I understand that the franchisee is very strong and that she is immovable or anything like that. But what I'm saying is that beautiful island has turned into a maintenance yard of that particular uh, franchisee. They, they ply the area of uh, Vito Cruz and in Tomoa. And the, the vehicles themselves are so dilapidated and rusty and all that. And it seems like uh, she, she or the franchisee has so much power that nobody can touch her. I reported it to the barangay people. I reported it to uh, the police. You know, mm -hmm. they can look at it. But mm -hmm. nothing is being done. It's so sad because that area is still part of the uh, tourist area. It's mm -hmm. near Century Park Hotel. And nothing is being done. They, they, they have a lot of street vendors cooking mm -hmm. there and, they, and a lot of stench going on. So what can you say about that, sir? Okay, Chairman, Chairman, well, you want to address the, that? The uh, maintenance of uh, the public vehicles or uh, the uh, public roads. I think she's uh, uh, mentioning about an island an in island, a public yeah. uh, road in Vito Cruz. Mm -hmm. And uh, that basically falls under the jurisdiction either of the local government unit or the MMDA in so far as enforcement is concerned. Mm -hmm. But we will look into the matter of uh, the maintenance of these uh, uh, orange uh, jeepneys mm -mm. that uh, she is referring to. Because that falls, have, the maintenance falls under yes. the LTFRB. Do they right? have Department. the proper uh, maintenance uh, shop, um, mechanics on their mm -hmm. side? Do they have a terminal on mm -hmm. their, uh, as part of their requirement? So we will look into that. If they don't have, then we have to require them. And they should not I mean, mm -hmm. uh, use the public road as their maintenance. Or, or an island. Yeah, an or island the island. Matter. All right, all right. So, all right, all right uh, Victoria, I hope we answered your question. Thank you, thank you. But I have another concern, sir. Yes, I Victoria. made a trip. I reported an, an erring driver, abusive driver, mm -hmm. and I even got invited with a formal letter to come and show up. I did. I even spent 700 pesos to find the LTO of, or LTRB office in Quezon City. And as it turned out, when I got there, the, the hearing, presiding judge was saying, sorry, we can't do anything about the driver. I said, why? You invited me to show up, and here I am. But they said, oh, we don't have enough manpower and all this jazz. And they had the information. You know, I gave it to them. Unfortunately, I was so disgusted because they just wasted my time. When here I am trying to be a good citizen, you know, reporting earring drivers no, and no. nothing was this was a done, public so. Was this a public uh, driver? I mean, a public vehicle driver, uh, Victoria? It was a taxi. A taxi driver. Uh, yeah. Chairman, uh, in situations like that, what is the best... Uh, what is the best option for, for someone like Victoria? No? We actually take action. It's not the driver that we can uh, have jurisdiction. What we do is we take action against the operator. We penalize the operator because it is the operator that we have jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So far as the driver is concerned, so far as his uh, license is concerned and the right to drive is the, the LTO's concern. So 
we make a recommendation for either the suspension or cancellation of the driver's uh, mm -hmm. license. Mm -hmm. But in that case, uh, if, if Victoria is told that we don't have manpower to, to hear this case, where should Th she that, go? That is not true because I have mm -hmm. hearing officers that are uh, dedicated to hear these cases. So, so I, I guess that, that hearing officer was probably having a bad day or something. <laughs> well, uh, Victoria, I think the, the best, uh, best case there is that we have hotlines, right? Yes. You have hotlines and there's a, a LTFRB has a Facebook page and you, you can report uh, the hotline. The hotline, sir, is? 459-2129. Uh, Alright, so Victoria, I hope we were able to, to help you uh, in some way. Really. Alright, All right. thank you, Victoria. Now, uh, a friend of mine is asking, I was in a minor car accident two weeks ago wherein the, the front bumper was scratched. I admit it was my fault and I'm willing to use my insurance to cover the damages I ha uh, that I've done. The problem is the second party doesn't want to cooperate and instead is filing a case against me. What would be the best way to settle this that doesn't involve facing trial, especially since the car suffered only minor damages? Now, I, I don't know if uh, this is an LTO or LTFRB uh, matter, but uh, as a lawyer, want to take a shot at it? <laughs> well, uh, it's uh, for them to talk about it and uh, settle it among themselves. Uh, that's, that's really, uh, it depends on who's right or wrong, anyway, mm -hmm. I guess, and, the and depends on the police report, I guess. Uh, but the, it, it's the right of the other party to file a case, I guess. That yes. You can't, you can't really, you uh, can't really stop that. You can't really right. stop that, right? Okay. All right. So, uh, do we have any more questions? Uh, now, um, Chief, um, you also review your mga vehicles, as you mentioned, diba? And, and then you, do you also, there are some vehicles, for example, that are coming out. And these are, I guess, not public vehicles. But let's say, yung mga, the ones that, are very loud yung mga, yung, uh, may, parang they have a big speakers <laughs> na nag dug 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 na tsaka mga ilaw nila or they have parang weird lights. Uh, are those covered under the LTO? Uh, do you manage? Kasi I would imagine they're probably road hazards. Huh? This falls under PD-96, sir. Yung mm -hmm. pagkakabit ng mga wangwang, -wang, ng mga uh -oh. ilaw na. Uh, uh, so so that, that would fall under lights. you? So if I see someone like that, can I report them to the LTO? Yung mga ganon, yung mga ganong klaseng vehicles, yes, mali yung lights nila and everything? Yes, sir. Uh, pwede yun. And okay. what, what kind of penalties can you impose naman on them? Ang uh, penalty ho noong pag nahuli, 15,000 noong ano. 15,000? Ang penalty. Uh, if, if they don't subscribe to uh, yung mga standards ng, ng vehicle. All right. Now, we have a question from uh, Ping. What are our rights as passengers when a taxi driver is refusing us? Yan, nako, interesting yan. Kasi maraming na mga problema niyan sa mga uh -huh. refusing taxi drivers. Yeah. Actually, uh, during uh, the previous administrations, ang Oplan is na bero po ay lagi lang nilang nilulunsad ito tuwing Christmas. But as, uh, when we launched it last December, mm -hmm. we decided to continue it uh, up to now, whole year round campaign. You know? mm -hmm. So it's what we call yung Oplans na bero yung mga snobbish drivers natin. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, we have jurisdiction over the operator. We call them to a hearing mm -hmm. if we receive a valid complaint mm -hmm. and uh, we impose the proper fine and penalty. Mm -hmm. So far as the driver is concerned, we refer that to the LTO for the appropriate uh, adjudication process naman mm -hmm. ng LTO. And again, kung if they experience something like that, can they just call the LTFRB hotline and then, yes. and, 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 uh, of course, post on Facebook? Yes. And report the, uh, the plate number? Mm -hmm. Ayan. So, um, now, uh, Chief, um, as we were discussing earlier, no, there were uh, two major accidents, bus accidents. No? Okay. And since you're in charge of... Uh, I guess renewing the licenses or issuing licenses to, to drivers. Uh, in light of what happened po sa mga accidents na nangyari, no? May, merong bang new uh, development in so far as making ensuring that uh, the issuing of licenses is is uh, more strict so that yung mga inissuean ng, ng licenses are those that are are may, sober or talagang capable to drive. Ganun. May Meron? mga ginagawa na pong moves ngayon ng pamunuan na mm -hmm. Alimbawa, ang, ang isang student license, mm -hmm. eh, student, hindi na uh, pwedeng professional <coughs> na kaagad. Kailangan magdaan muna sa non-pro so, oh, bago maging professional. Okay. Uh, dapat, dapat students muna? Oh, may okay. ginagawa pong ganong... Alright. Now, there is a, uh, an anti-drunk driving law. I think you're quite familiar with it. Can you give us uh, a little bit of uh, information and 
when the implementing rules and regulations will do you think will will uh, come out or chairman do, do you okay. have an idea of th yeah that? actually the final draft was already routed to mm -hmm. the secretaries mm -hmm. of uh, uh, the agencies that are concerned the departments mm -hmm. and uh, the DOTC is just waiting for the approval and the signature of the secretaries and it will be implemented as soon as the signatures are complete mm -hmm. okay and do you, do, you, do you foresee at least a timetable for that no, not really no, it's, it, I'm not really <laughs> part of uh, the uh, committee, the uh, interagency committee that is responsible for that. Mm -hmm. But that was the update that was made to the president by our DOTC secretary during the road accident uh, meeting at Malacanang last Thursday. Okay. Now, wh when it comes to mga traffic altercations and, and all of that, and I just want to clarify it, because no? there are a lot of televiewers now uh, calling and uh, actually posting on Facebook. When it comes to traffic altercations or, or or problems when it comes to public vehicles uh, is there in uh, apart from the fact that uh, I guess uh, you're questioning the franchise does the LTFRB or the LTO get involved at all or it's purely a, an MMDA police matter well in so far as the violation of the terms and conditions of the franchise we have jurisdiction mm -hmm. no so they can actually file a complaint mm -hmm. once they the find LTF out if there LTF was a viola LTF. violation yes no? in terms of violation because mm -hmm. that's where our jurisdiction lies mm -hmm. but beyond that wala na po kami civil mm -hmm. criminal etc and does it increase their penalty does it increase their penalty if they they violated some kind of uh, no? uh, let's if, say do i get me as a victim of a of a bus for example that uh, was the applying the route without the, the proper franchise. Do, do, can, I, can the LTFRB award damages to me? No. 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 no, uh, no. We can only uh, give the full extent of uh, the penalties, uh, revocation of uh, uh, okay. franchise. Okay, so uh, basically I can use that as leverage to be able to get something from the, from the bus companies, so I guess. No? Should not be. Should not, it should be. not be a leverage. You should uh, really fight, file, a, file, for, uh, file a case uh, in, uh, in court. Right, okay. Now, Beth is asking the man, my husband was involved in a near accident with a 13-year-old boy who was driving a motorcycle without a helmet or even a driver's license. He was speeding and was trying to take over my husband who was getting ready to parallel park our car. Now, the boy suffered only minor cuts from falling off the motorcycle. He told us he was okay, but when we went to the barangay, his mother said he suffered from more than the cuts. All right, uh, the question here is who is more at fault here and can the mother file a case against us? I guess this is a, I, I guess this is a case that of, uh, no, no, he said, she said, so it would depend, it would depend on the police report, I guess, no? Yes, yeah. uh, but uh, here, there's uh, a law that requires uh, helmet. helmet. And this is a very, this is a minor uh, kid driving a without a license. Kid driving without a license, without a helmet. Uh, Chief, anong, ano yan? anong uh, penalties niyan? Or anong... Uh, I guess, uh, violations uh, na pwede siyang tirahin? Medyo, medyo... Wala, 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 wala siya helmet? Wala kung sa legal concern. Medyo kulang oh, sa legal Pero in, in, that case, in that case, can uh, can I go to the LTO, question the fact that he didn't have a, a helmet and he didn't have a license? Siguro sa police, sir. Sa, sa police, police na yun. Aksidente ho ah. kasi yun. Oo. Oh. Pag mga aksidente sa police ang... Oo. Oh. Pero sa... Ang LTO ba is involved at all in, in the implementation of, let's say, the, the helmet uh, rule? Oh. Oh. Kaya so. if, if you see someone... Kayo, your, your operations chief, if you see someone that's, uh, let's say, a motorcycle driver na driving without a helmet, ina-apprehend ba? Do you have the right to apprehend? Ina-apprehend po, sir. Ah, ina-apprehend nyo? Na, okay. na sa rin po namin ang pag So that, that falls under your jurisdiction? Mm -hmm. All right, okay. Now, from Mannix, are motorcycles obligated to follow speed limits similar to cars and other four-wheeled vehicles? Uh, I, would, I would assume, no? Motorcycles, uh, there's a speed limit. May speed limit sa, sa kalye. Uh, does that apply only to the, I guess, the four-wheeled uh, vehicles or it applies also to motorcycles? Kasi yung motorcycle, ay eh, one part of the road, uh, the road po rin ang gunan ang... Mm -hmm. eh, yung pong sasakyan niya, parang entitled siya sa one part of the road. Mm -hmm. Kaya kaya kailangan ay eh, sumunod din siya. Sumunod din siya. Sa tamang kwan. Uh, so so pwede rin siyang hulihin. speed limit, sir. So pwede rin siyang uh, hulihin. Uh, ah, alright. Okay. All right. Uh, well, sadly, that is all the time that we have for this evening. Uh, I would like to thank uh, our guests for tonight, Chairman Winston Hines of the LTFRB and, of course, uh, Chief Pascual de los Santos of the LTO for being with us tonight.
If you have any questions regarding our topic for tonight, share it on, on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, check, of course, the Legal HD uh, Facebook page and Twitter pages. Join us again next Monday as we discuss your legal rights. I'm Attorney Rod Depomuceno. Good night and God bless.